Check out FlipSideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. Use the promo code HEROES to save 10% on all orders over $10. Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends, and welcome to another edition of the Magic the Gathering Market Watch. This week is a little bit slower in the secondary market. I do think a lot of players are waiting to see what Crimson Vow previews are going to bring us. I was even able to lower the threshold in this video to $1, so we're not going to talk about any card today unless it's moving at least a dollar up or down. Quickly, before we get into the details, though, just a fast reminder, if you go to FlipSideGaming.com, you can use that Heroes promo code to save 10% on orders over $10. Currently, you can pre-order Innistrad Crimson Vow products there. They also have a whole lot of other things on their website. Remember, if your order is over $100 or it consists only of singles, shipping will be free in the United States. Also, whenever you use the promo code, it does support the channel, which is always appreciated. So thank you. And without any further ado, let's get into it. We'll begin, as we always do, with the standard legal spotlight. This is where we look at the cards that are moving the most that are standard legal. And first, we're going to see some cards going down in value. Goldspan Dragon down to $1.17 to $43.76. This is retracting after some recent increases. However, this is still seeing a ton of play in Standard. It is in the very popular Is a Dragon's deck, of course, but it's also in other places too. Teamer, Rakdos, Jun, Denaya Midrange, Gruul Aggro. Sometimes this is in Is a Control and Gruul Werewolves as well. Also, this is seeing some increased commander play in Florian, Valder, and Scion builds. Next is Vorinclex Monstrous Raider. This goes down $1.19 to $30.73. This has been moving down slowly for a while now. In standard, you do see it in Mono Green Aggro, sometimes Selesnia Life Gain, Pioneer, it's in Mono Green Ramp. And this is a fairly popular commander, plus it can be found in the 99 of a lot of builds, including a new one, Sarath the Viper's Fang. Ranger Class down $1.72 to $14.27. This is retracting after some big spikes that occurred around the time of the Magic World Championship. In standard, this is still in mono green aggro, teamer midrange, gruel werewolves, gruel aggro, pioneer, you'll find this in naya midrange, mono green ramp, sometimes mono green company as well. And in commander, it is seeing more play now in Tovalar Dire Overlord slash Tovalar the Midnight Scourge decks. Run in seven down to $1.76 to $34.16. Now this continues to settle down as packs get cracked, but it is seeing a lot of play in standard like a lot of the cards we're talking about in this section today. It is in mono green aggro. Selesnya, Saltai, and Bant Ramp, Jun Control, Grill Werewolves, Grill Aggro, sometimes Teamer Midrange. In Commander, this is an Omnithocus of Creation, and a number of other builds as well, old and new. Demi Lich, this is the last card going down in value in this section, but it is down 312 this week to 1599. When it comes to standard, sometimes this shows up in Mono Blue Tempo, but really this card got hot recently because of those Phoenix builds in Modern. We saw this card spike a few weeks ago because those decks were performing well. Now those builds are quickly disappearing from the meta, and you can see that reflected in the price of this card. With that being said, though, it has seen some increased commander play in Lair Disciple of the Drowned builds recently. First card going up is Shatter Skull Smashing. This goes up $1.39 to $8.46, and simply, this is seeing a ton of play in multiple formats right now. Standard, it's in Is It Dragons, which again is very popular. Also in Is It Control. Teamer, Naya, Jun, Dan, Rakdos, Midrange, Gruel, Werewolves, Gruel, Aggro, Pioneer, this is in Gruel, Ramp, in Modern, it's in Charbelcher, that deck's seeing more play now in the format, also in Red Eldrazi and Jeskai Stoneblade there, in Legacy, it's in Blood Moon, Aggro, and this is getting increased commander play now in Tovalar builds, and also in Lind, Cheerful Tormentor decks. Last standard card in this section is another one that is seeing a lot of play, this is Memory Deluge, it goes up 264 this week to 749. In standard, again, you're going to find this in the popular Is It Dragons deck, but it's also in Is It Grixis, Demir, Azorius, Esper, and Jeskai Control. It's in Bant Ramp there too. Pioneer, you'll see this in Demir Control, sometimes Azorius Control. Modern, it's in Azorius, Jeskai, and Grixis Control, also in Wilderness Reclamation. Beyond that, this is appearing in a number of commander builds now, both old and new. And that brings us to the Pioneer Legal Spotlight, starting again with the cards going down in value. Arlen Cord, this goes down $1.27 to $17.99. This spiked not too long ago due to the werewolf support in Midnight Hunt. Now maybe the hype has died down around that tribe a little bit, but it is still seeing increased commander play in Tovalar builds. Crucible of Worlds from Fifth Dawn, this is down $1.44 this week to $43.65. This is getting a lot less play now compared to about a year ago. In Legacy, sometimes you'll see this in Lands or Jeskai Standstill. Vintage, it is in Prison and Aggro Shops. Still a popular commander card, though, seeing more play in Slowgirk the Overslime. 
Thoughtseize, the one from Double Masters, goes down $1.61 to dollar sixty one to fifteen forty six. Now there is a copy of this in the Orzov Auras Pioneer Challenger deck that came out not too long ago. Because of that, this card is a little bit soft, as you can see. Thoughtseize is still a staple found in many decks in Pioneer, Modern, and Legacy. It can even see a little commander play, and it is getting more play now in some of the old Stick Fingers builds. Smothering Tithe from Ravnica Allegiance. This goes down $1.69 to dollar sixty nine to thirty five dollars. Another card that's moving down but still sees a ton of play. This is a huge commander staple found in multiple decks. Arclight Phoenix is on its way down again, down $1.78 to eleven ninety two, And this is in Pioneer as a Phoenix, sure, but moving down because of the reasons we mentioned earlier. Those modern Phoenix builds are just not performing in a way that a lot of people anticipated. This can see a tad bit of commander play, but really not all that much in that format either. Brazen Borrower, this is the last card going down in this section. Throne of Eldraine down $1.36 to dollar thirty six to fifteen twenty five. The copy from the list goes down five seventy five to forty six oh four. That's lost a lot of value over the last few weeks. Still think that price is inflated, but it was only on the list during Zendikar Rising. Other than the fact that this did rotate out of standard not too long ago, there is another reason this is losing value the way that it is. It was reprinted in the Math is for Blocker Secret Layer recently. And you can get a copy of this in the Azorius Spirits Pioneer Challenger deck. Now, it does still see a lot of play in a lot of places. Pioneer is a Phoenix is a Delver. Modern Crashing Footfalls Living End is a Control and much more. Legacy, it's a Ninjas. Teamer Cascade is a Delver and more there. Commander, this has even seen some increased play recently in Lair builds. Brought back is up $1.31 to two sixty six. So what exactly brought this card back? Well, you might have seen on ChannelFireball.com this week there was a featured modern deck called Boros Brought Back. Of course, the deck was running four copies of this, and it has some pretty good interactions with this and a number of other cards. It does get a little Commander Play 2 in various builds, but really moving because of that new modern build. Idolin of the Great Revel. This is the copy from Masters 25. It goes up $1.67 to $13.24. Pioneer, you'll see this in Burn and Mono Red Aggro. You may have noticed that one of the Pioneer Challenger decks is a Burn build. And guess what? It does not include any copies of this card. So some players may be picking this up to upgrade that deck. Also, this is in Modern and Legacy Burn. Plus, it can see a tad bit of Commander playing aggressive builds at times. Shulane Teller of Tales, that copy from the list, again, only there during Zendikar Rising. It goes up in theory 217 to 1699 Again, though, you have an example of a card that is inflated price-wise. I do think you can find this much cheaper if you look around. When it comes to the gameplay, it is known for being a very popular commander and part of the 99 of some builds there too. Soren Imperious Bloodlord is the last card in this section today. It goes up 333 to 2833. In Pioneer, this is in Mono Black Vampires. It's also found in different Commander Vampire builds like Edgar Markov or the new Florian decks. Sure, Midnight Hunt did give a little support to Vampires, but the main event is still coming in the form of Crimson Vow and the Commander deck Vampiric Bloodline. A lot of players are already thinking about picking up some vampire cards or vampire support cards that they may need in the future. Granted, some of them could get reprinted. You don't know for sure yet what's going to be in these products. But some of the cards that are not reprinted could see a substantial spike once we see previews and then eventually when the product comes out. We saw that happen not too long ago with werewolves as well as zombies. Welcome to the Modern Legal Spotlight. Let's see what's happening with these Modern Legal cards this week. First, we have some cards going down in value again. Flooded Strand from Cons of Tarkir is down $335 to $40. This, like many lands, got hot after Modern Horizons 2 shook up the modern format, and you had a lot of players scrambling to pick up new mana bases as they built new decks or tried to enhance old ones. Now you can see this particular card is settling back down a little. This, like most fetch lands, gets a ton of play in multiple formats, modern, legacy, vintage, and it's in many commander builds, old and new. Force of Negation from Modern Horizons is down $353 this week to $76. This is another card that got pretty hot during that shakeup after Modern Horizons 2 came out just because it's in so many different modern decks. Now, with that being said, this did get a reprint as a Modern Horizons 1 retro frame card in Modern Horizons 2. However, you might remember those only came as foils or etch foils, and they were pretty hard to pull. You could only get them in collector booster packs. This is another example of a card that became a staple in multiple formats, not just modern. You'll also see this a lot in Legacy, Vintage, and Commander. Relentless Assault, the copy from Portal Second Age, is down 378 this week to 1278. This has been seeing increased Commander play in Tovalar builds, but this particular copy dried up a little while ago in the secondary market online, and we did see a pretty big spike. Now it is retracting some, as you can see, as more copies are entering the marketplace again. 
Second week in a row, Ragavan Nimble Pilfer are going down in value, this time down 422 to 7994. This is simply a case where you have a card that is seeing a ton of play in a lot of places. People just keep putting the price up. They don't know exactly how high the ceiling is going to be for this card. Well, it looks like for the time being, maybe they found the ceiling and it has been retracting for a couple weeks. With that in mind, it sees a ton of play. Modern, it's in Luris Jund, Murktide Regent, Death Shadow Builds, Sacrifice, and much more in that format. Legacy, it's in Izzet Delver, Jeskai Ragavan, much more there too. Vintage, it's in Teamer Control, Jeskai Control, and more in that format as well. And it's a popular commander, plus in the 99 of a lot of builds there too. Fluster Storm from Commander down 436 to 4495. Very similar story here to Relentless Assault in some ways. This particular copy dried up online not too long ago. It spikes kind of aggressively for a short period of time. Now it is going back down in value as more copies are entering the marketplace again. It is a highly played modern sideboard card. It's in a lot of different builds. This is typically brought in against Cascade decks or other matchups with less creatures. It also continues to see a lot of Legacy, Vintage, and Commander play in many different builds. Last card going down in value, another fetch land, but this time it is one of the enemy fetches. Scalding Tarn from Modern Masters 2017 is down 468 to 4305. We just talked about how much play these fetch lands do see, but you do have to remember that the enemy fetch lands were reprinted in Modern Horizons 2 not too long ago. Doubling Season is back, going up in value. Highly played Commander card, it's in many different decks, but it has been calm ever since the most recent reprinting. Now it does seem to be waking up again. It did get a Command Zone podcast mentioned this week, which could have brought some attention to it. Modern Masters goes up $1.16 to $76.96. Battle Bond goes up $206 to $74.37. And Ravnica City of Guilds goes up $466 to $78.43. Next, we have Lord of the Undead, the copy from the list, and it has been there the whole time from the beginning, still there now, and in a Strad Midnight Hunt. It goes up a dollar to 1997. Eighth edition up a dollar 28 to 2230. Tenth edition goes up 587 this week to $30.43. This is a zombie lord getting more commander play now due to the support the zombies did receive from Midnight Hunt. Some players are using this as an upgrade to Undead Unleashed, others are adding this to fresh builds around Will Help the Rock Cleaver. I'm sure Zombies will even get more support when Crimson Vow comes out as well. This is not the last card that fits into Zombie Commander builds you're going to see today. Mystic Gate. Both the copies that we've been talking about over the last month or so are moving up this week. Double Masters is up 469 to 3242. And Shadow Moor goes up 861 to 4741. In Modern, this is in Azorius Control, Jeskai Control, and Reanimator. And it is a solid Commander mana base card too. Lich Lord of Onyx, this is another zombie moving for the same reasons that Lord of the Undead is moving. The list copy goes up 570 this week to 2444, and this did just join the list with Midnight Hunt. Alara Reborn is up 1028 to $35. Chalice of the Void, that Meriden copy is up 267 to 7543. The Masters 25 copy, a little dry online this week, so you're seeing a big increase, although I think some of that is just inflation due to a lack of copies out there. In reality, I wouldn't expect to pay this price, but in theory, it's going up 1537 to 9150. This is another highly played sideboard card in the modern format. Being colorless, it does fit into anywhere it is needed. On top of that, it continues to get some legacy and vintage play as well as a little commander play. And that takes us to the vintage spotlight. This is where we talk about cards that see play in vintage legacy 9394 or cards that are just popular among collectors. Like I say every week, if you're making any purchases in the vintage market, be careful. There is still a lot of market manipulation that occurs. A lot less, though, compared to a number of months ago, which is good news. Also, too, when you go to your price tracking websites and you see values for some of these more iconic older cards, many times those values are truly a cross between high-grade raw and high-grade graded copies. And in this section of the video, the prices you'll see on the screen are going to be very reminiscent of what you might see on a price tracking website. So just keep that in mind as we go through. And if I do see a price on here that's not quite lining up with recent sales, I'll let you know. Plateau from Revised. Now, this is a very small percentage increase. It's up $1.80 to $3.43. However, I did want to point this out still because last week a lot of these were losing value. Looks like at the very least they're starting to stabilize. Scrubland from Revised is also up $205 to $378.10. Emrakul of the Eons Torn. This is the copy from the list. It did leave the list after Kel time. It goes up 441 this week to $55. This is banned in Commander. In Modern, though, it's an Indomitable Creativity. It's in Calibrated Blast as well. 
And it shows up in some sideboards there as an option against Mill. Legacy, this is in Sneak and Show, Omnitel, and more. Back to Revised Dual Lands with Tundra. This one's up 919 this week to 584.31. And the last dual land today is Tropical Island from Revised. It goes up 1062 to 713. Mana Crypt. Now, we saw recently that Convention Mystery Booster Boxes went out to game stores, adding some more copies of that particular version of the card into the marketplace. When that happened, even the other versions did slow down a little bit. They started to stabilize and dip slightly. Now it looks like they're all moving back up again. Mystery Booster this week is up 424 to 154.23. The original media promo book giveaway copy is up 1187 to 395.22. Of course, when it comes to gameplay, this is a very popular commander card. It's in many builds old and new. Plus, it gets a lot of vintage play in prison shops and much more. Jandor's Ring from Arabian Nights is up $13.65 this week to $120.49. Gabriel Angel Fire. This goes up $14.80 this week to $62.73. This is the copy from Legends. And you are going to notice there are a number of gold cards from Legends on the list this week. They may be getting targeted to some degree. Cockatrice from Unlimited is up sixteen seventy nine to thirty nine ninety three. Arcady Sabbath from Legends goes up sixteen eighty seven to ninety nine ninety nine. Lion's Eye Diamond this is going up seventeen forty this week to six seventeen thirty nine. In Legacy you're going to find this one in Doomsday, Carnacos, The Epic Storm, and more. Sees a little more Commander play now too in some of those old Stick Fingers builds. Personal Incarnation from Unlimited is up seventeen ninety eight to fifty nine ninety nine. Zira Aryan from Legends is up $20.14 to ninety nine ninety eight. Su Chi goes up twenty five twenty two to one fifty five fifty one. Fungusaur from Unlimited is up twenty five ninety nine to one nineteen ninety nine. Kobold Overlord, this is up twenty six zero eight to one twenty nine ninety nine. Aladdin from Arabian Nights is up twenty seven eighty six to one ninety nine ninety nine. Nickel Bolas from Legends is up forty one ninety nine to two thirty nine forty eight. Surrendib Jin, this goes up 42.31 this week to 3.98. Hezazan Tamar, this goes up 45.02 to 3.45. We've seen a lot of gold cards from Legends today, but notice this is the only one on the reserve list. Next we have Guardian Beast, it goes up 219.95 to $1,499.99, or does it? Well, this is a price you might expect to pay for a high-grade graded copy. High-grade Raws can sell for about $800 typically. Shazam Jin is jumping again up 336.02 to $3,190. Ancestral Recall from Unlimited, kind of the opposite situation here compared to Guardian Beast. This in theory is going up $640 to $6,359.99. Now when it comes to recent sales, this is what you might expect to pay for a high-grade raw copy. High-grade graded copies can get up to around $9,000 now. Mishra's Workshop is back again, going up $750.05 to $4,750 this week. And Mox Ruby from Unlimited is up $1,000 to $10,000 in theory. Is this for real? Well, I do think this is a little high compared to your average sale. There hasn't been a ton of sales for this card recently, so it is a little difficult to track. I have seen high-grade graded copies sell for up to $6,900, but I have not seen any high-grade raw copies sell for a little while. When it comes to these Power 9 cards, because there's so few sales, many times the price shifts that you're seeing from week to week are simply based on the condition of the cards that are for sale that given week. And that takes us to the Commander Spotlight, kind of your best of the rest. Every card in this section is moving, at least in part because of Commander. It is a very popular format. However, in many cases, that's not the only reason the card's moving, and even in some cases, that could be a lesser reason. So let's jump in and see what's going on. Pyrohemia, this is the Commander Anthology copy up a dollar to ten ninety eight. It has seen some increased commander play in Rem Carlos Stalwart Slayer builds. Vault of the Archangel, this is the copy from the Modern Event deck. It goes up a dollar to nine thirty nine. It is getting a reprint in the Showcase Midnight Hunt Secret Layer, so keep that in mind. It is a solid commander card, many times found in Edgar Markov builds. We know that build could be getting more play soon, which is why there could be a little attention on this card. This is also in a modern Orzop Tokens build. Solitude is hanging around up $1.01 to $43. This has been a fairly popular commander card in a number of different builds, but it's seen a ton of modern play. It's in Azorius and Jeskai Control, Azorius Blink, Five Color Elementals, and much more. In fact, there are four of these in the Boros Brought Back deck I mentioned earlier, since this does play well with Brought Back. And in Legacy, you'll find this in Death and Taxes. 
Pathbreaker Ibex, this is the copy from Commander 2015. It goes up $1.02 to $29.53. Solid Commander card in various builds. Wand of Orcus, up $1.05 to $8. This is from the Adventures in the Forgotten Realms Dungeons of Death Commander deck. It is getting a lot more Commander playing now in zombie builds, again, due to the push the zombie tribe did receive. This is a good upgrade to Undead Unleashed. Also good in fresh builds around new cards like Will Help the Rock Cleaver and Gorex the Tomb Shell. Call the Copper Coats. This is a pretty big percentage increase up at $1.06 to $3.01. Now it's easy to forget that Midnight Hunt didn't just push zombies and werewolves, it also pushed humans. Because of that, this card is seeing increased commander play. It is a good upgrade to Coven Counters, and it's in fresh builds around a number of cards from both that deck and the main set. Lenora Autumn Sovereign, Kyler Sigardian Emissary, Catilda Dawnheart Prime, Adeline Resplendent Cathar, and Sigarda Champion of Light. Humans could also get some more support in Crimson Vow as well. Bitter Blossom, this is the one from Modern Masters 2015. It goes up at $1.06 to $51.21. This is seeing more commander play now in Eloise Nephalia Sleuth, plus it is in Modern Orzhov Tokens. Time Stretch from Odyssey up at $1.13 to $26.83, and this is getting some increased commander play in a couple builds. Vadrak Astral Archmage, as well as Lear. Rite of Flame, this is the copy from the list that was only there during Cal time. It's up at $1.15 this week to $5.78. Another card getting more commander play in Vadric builds. Also, this is in Legacy the Epic Storm and more there. Boseju, who shelters all from Champions of Kamigawa. This goes up at $1.17 to thirty four eighty two. Yet another card that can show up in Commander Vadric. Modern, this is in Calibrated Blast. Legacy, sometimes this is in Sneak and Show or Omnital. Sword of Feast and Famine from Double Masters. This is getting more commander play now in Tovalar builds. It goes up at $1.17 to $70.22. Child of Alara from Conflux, up $1.27 to $26.89. This is a very popular commander, and as you probably know by now, Commander's Quarters did a video recently showcasing a 99 land commander deck. This happened to be the commander. Plus, this did get a Command Zone podcast mention this week, too, which again could have brought some more attention back to it. No Mercy from Urza's Legacy, getting more commander play now in Lind builds. It goes up $1.27 to $46.32. Sliver Legion from Future Sight up $1.29 to $39.09. Wow, this card has lost a lot of value over the last number of months. Of course, it was reprinted in Time Spiral Remastered, which is why it did lose all the value that it did. Now, it is moving back up a little bit. Maybe it has finally stabilized. It is a good commander for Sliver builds or a solid card in the 99 for those type of decks. Zombie Master, the revised copy up $1.18 to $15.78. The 5th edition copy is up $1.30 to $14.32. Another solid zombie lord that is seeing more commander play now because of the push that the tribe received. Good upgrade again to Undead Unleashed, or something you might want to put in a fresh build around Wilhelt or Gorex. Cadaverous Bloom, this goes up at $1.37 to $13.36. This can see a tad bit of commander play, but most likely it is moving due to its status on the reserve list. There was a video by Gem Mint MTG that sparked a conversation on an MTG Finance message board, and it was about playable reserve list cards. This was one of the cards that was featured. Ulamog the Infinite Gyre from Modern Masters 2015. It goes up $1.38 to $69.13. This is in Commander Kozilek the Great Distortion and more. Femoref Enchantress up $1.45 to $16.67. This is in some enchantment heavy commander builds like Tuvasa the Sunlit, but this was another card that was brought up in that conversation about playable reserve list cards I mentioned a moment ago. Horizon Canopy, the original copy from Future Sight. It's up $1.72 to $38.50. This is a solid land for many commander builds, and it is seeing more play now in Katilda decks. Plus, it does get some modern and legacy play. Micaeus the Unhallowed. Not only is this good in commander zombie builds like Wilhelm, but many times this shows up in old Stick Fingers decks too. Of course, this is another good upgrade to Undead Unleashed as well. Ultimate Masters goes up $1.53 to $55. And the copy from the list that did join the list with Midnight Hunt, it goes up $1.81 to $49.81. Hidden Path up $1.88 to $40. This got hot back when the Maya Cradle of Growth was previewed prior to Modern Horizons 2. I still don't really see many players using this card, though. It may get a tad bit of commander play, but I think, again, this is moving more due to its status on the reserve list. Hellkite Charger, the one from Arch Enemy, is up $1.99 to $9.92. This is in a lot of Dragon Commander builds, including the Ur Dragon. He's been staring at you the whole time. Captivating Vampire. He is quite captivating. Now, the Magic 2011 copy is up $1.06 to $14. 
The one from the list is up 213 to 1496. This did join the list with Adventures in the Forgotten Realms. So, of course, Crimson Vow and Vampiric Bloodline Strike again, another good vampire card that does see play in Commander Edgar Markov decks now. I'm sure it's going to see more play in the future. Ghoul Caller Gisa, the one from Jumpstart, is up 216 to 1250. Now, this is going to be reprinted in the Commander Collection Black, so keep that in mind. This is not a zombie itself, but obviously this is good in Commander Zombie decks. Not only are players adding this to Undead Unleashed and putting this in new Will Help decks, but it is showing up in some other new builds as well. Gissa Glorious Resurrector and Eloise Nefalia Sleuth. Not to mention that this is also a fairly popular commander. Season of the Witch. This is up 259 this week to 4947. Another reserve list card from the dark that can see a tad bit of commander play. This does tend to jump a little every year around Halloween though. Tarmogoyf, the copy from the list, only there during Modern Horizons 2. It goes up 287 to 4499. Now, this can see a little commander play in various builds, but in Modern, you'll find this in Lurus and Regular Jund, Domain Zoo and more. Vintage, this is in Saltai Midrange, and sometimes Teamer Control. Avacyn Angel of Hope, this is the original copy from Avacyn Restored. It goes up 292 this week to 4599. This is a fairly popular commander, and it is found in a number of different decks, including Kalia of the Vast. Unholy Grotto, this is the Onslaught copy going up 355 this week to 3167. Now, it is important to note that this is on the list that joined with Midnight Hunt, another card that is seeing more commander play because of the increased zombie support. Good upgrade to Undead Unleashed also can be added to fresh Will Held decks. Maze of Ith, the copy from the dark, is up 436 to 4995. Solid commander card, and I have seen this in some new builds like Lind and Slowgurk. This is also in those Child of Alara commander decks frequently. In Legacy, you'll see this in Lands and Selesnya Depths as well. And we'll end things with another vampire. This is Patron of the Vein. It goes up 932 this week to 2415. Another solid vampire for Commander, currently found in Edgar Markov and more. Again, though, this is moving now because of Crimson Vow and Vampiric Bloodline. Everybody is waiting to see those previews. All right, that's going to wrap things up. I don't have a premium spotlight this week. I did look at a number of cards, but I didn't see anything that caught my eye that I wanted to discuss. I mean, there are premium cards moving all over the place as usual. But I like to pick things that are a little more relevant to what's going on currently in the market as opposed to something that just randomly dried up or maybe was targeted for a buyout. So anyway, I'm sure there's going to be some premium cards to talk about next week. Until then, though, hey, thanks for watching. If you stuck with me the whole time, I do appreciate you. As always, stay safe out there. Please remember to like and subscribe and have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible through the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon and have a great day.